A lot of moving parts characterize the development of aeronautics from 1941 to the end of the war in 1945. For the U.S. Navy, the creation of the twin-engine XF7F-1 Tiger Cat design in the summer of 1941 was a blend of technology and tradition. The F7F stayed with the Navy's traditional preference for air-cooled engines, using a pair of powerful R2800 radials. Conventional wisdom said air-cooled engines were easier to service and supply on shipboard than were engines which relied on a liquid cooling system. In fact, Lockheed proposed a navalized P-38 powered by air-cooled radial engines, but that remained a paper airplane. The XF7F was a clean execution of form-follows-function designing. The round engines were neatly fared into two large nacelles to provide as much streamlining as possible, along with space for the main landing gear. The fuselage was free of constraints imposed by the typical single-engine fighter design, where the power plant dictated the cross-section shape and size. Hence, the F7F's fuselage was a lean, narrow, streamlined shape, culminating in a long, pointed nose that housed a first for U.S. Navy production fighters, a nose wheel. The F-7F exploited Grumman's experience with two prior twin-engine fighter designs that did not go into production. The company's F-5F was a stubby, tailwheel twin-engine fighter proposed for Navy service. First flying in April 1940, the XF-5F showed a top speed of 383 miles per hour at sea level, 50 miles an hour faster than the single-engine F-4F Wildcat. The logistics chain for supporting the twin-engine F-5F fighter aboard aircraft carriers was more complicated than that for a single-engine fighter including one left-turning and one right-turning engine and propeller combination. The Navy decided to stick with single-engine fighters like the Wildcat and Hellcat. The U.S. Army Air Corps liked aspects of the XF-5F and ordered a tricycle gear variant in 1939 as the XP-50. Grumman's design for the Air Corps gave the XP-50 a slender, long nose. The aesthetics of that design would show up again in the F-7F Tiger Cat. The XP-50 handily exceeded 420 miles an hour. The P-50's flight test program was cut short by a turbo supercharger explosion in May 1941 that forced a bailout and loss of the aircraft. A follow-on, the XP-65, was considered for development along with a new Navy twin that became the XF-7F. The effort to make a common airframe to meet differing requirements of the Army Air Forces and the Navy was daunting, and the AAF design gave way to the pure naval development of the F-7F Tiger Cat. The F-7F simplified the logistics chain by having both engines rotate in the same direction. Though premised as a fighter, the Tiger Cat was designed to be able to heft a thousand pound bomb under each wing, or an aircraft torpedo under the center line. Alternately, long range streamlined drop tanks could be carried. Carrier suitability tests found problems with early Tiger Cats, including issues with the wishbone tail hook, especially in slightly skewed touchdowns. Single engine directional stability was problematical. The F7F originally had a measured height of 15 feet 2 inches to the top of its tail. Tests conducted by the NACA at Ames Research Laboratory in California in 1945 and 46 with an XF7F-1 validated an extension of the tail for improved stability and control and to diminish dihedral effect which is the roll produced by side slip. The new tail put the F7F at a towering 16 feet 7 inches above the surface. The change only slightly altered the movable rudder area, but increased its vertical fin surface from 28.0 to 38.3 square feet. With no Navy carrier deployments, World War II ended without Tiger Cats in combat. Marine Corps F7F2 night fighter variants were en route to the Pacific, but hostilities ceased before they saw action. Other short tail Dash 2s were modified with a raised back seat beneath a canopy from an F8F Bearcat for use as a drone director under the designation F7F-2D. The F7F3 fighter continued in production and delivery to Marine Corps units after the end of the war. The original short tail was changed to the taller version during the F7F3 production run. F7F3N night fighter versions had a second cockpit for the radar operator. Some of these saw service with the Marines during the Korean War, flying nocturnal interdiction missions and twice downing North Korean PO2 biplanes operating at night. The Tiger Cat came at a transitional time when Navy and Marine future fighter developments were based on jets. As one of the last piston engine fighters, the F7F3 boasted a top speed of 435 miles per hour at 22,200 feet. 
Some F-7F-3s became F-7F-3P photo reconnaissance aircraft. The final production was a dozen F-7F-4N two-place night fighters. A 13th-4, the prototype of the series, had the equipment of the model but lacked the strength and structure that was the hallmark of this model. The Dash 4s were beefed up for carrier operations. The Tiger Cat's power and maneuverability were appreciated by aviators of the day, and airshow visitors have seen that same performance when top warbird pilots like Stu Dawson and Steve Hinton put F7F3s through their paces. Tiger Cats have also been a crowd favorite at recent Reno air races. The survival of any airworthy Tiger Cats is due to the Navy's insistence on making the F-7F fighter capable of carrying heavy bomb loads. This made the fighter feasible for use as a firefighting air tanker. Kreitzberg Aviation of Salem, Oregon is credited with making the first Tiger Cat air tanker conversion around 1958, capitalizing on its load carrying ability. Initial F-7F3 air tanker conversions used the underwing pylons for two retardant tanks. This was later upgraded to a bulbous slipper tank attached to the fuselage that could carry 800 gallons of retardant. If that load was less than some other air tankers, the F-7F got to the target and returned faster, making more sorties possible in the same amount of time. When Tiger Cats were no longer needed as air tankers, they found homes in museums and warbird collections, with several airworthy as this video was produced. At the airport, the ship is loaded with retardant and specific written information about the location, bearing, and distance to the fire are given to the pilot. Final instructions are confirmed. During the briefing, the crew prepares the plane for takeoff, and within minutes, the air tanker is on its way. Following directions, the pilot locates the fire from the air and prepares for initial attack. Success or failure still depend on this key man. From his background, training, experience, and judgment, he appraises the direction of fire spread, the probable drift of the airdrop, the type of cover, and the terrain, always looking for natural barriers and openings in the canopy. After he sizes up the situation, he makes the drop. Perfect. An air tanker is requested, and another drop is made.
request to quantify aircraft performance can lead to a variety of tables with differing numbers. So with the caveat that the performance of any given airplane can depend on its condition, configuration, how it was measured, and other variables, here are some comparison numbers that place the F7F3 Tiger Cat in the ranks of top piston engine fighters. Top speed of the F7F3 is listed as 435 miles an hour. Range is 1,200 miles. Top speed of the P51D is listed as 437 miles an hour, with range at 950 miles. Top speed of the P47N is listed as 467 miles an hour. Range is 800 miles.
Every time we get to see a mighty F7F Tiger Cat go through its powerful paces at an air show, we owe a debt of thanks to the owners, pilots, and maintainers of these classic warbirds, and to the air shows that showcase their performances.